We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now from the Gospel of John. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. It's because he isn't the shepherd. The, shepherd, the sheep aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep. He's only a hired hand and the sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. The Father knows me, and I know the Father. I give up my tongue to this sheep pen. I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. This week, I want to tell you about how things might change for you, for Ramona United Methodist Church, and for the world, if we allow ourselves to listen to the Good Shepherd. First, I think we need to understand what a shepherd is to his flock. Certainly, the people listening to Jesus had a better understanding of what it meant to be a shepherd than most of us do. So in Amos 3.12, we read, Thus says the Lord, As the shepherd rescues from the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the people of Israel who dwell in Samaria be rescued with the corner of a couch and a part of a bed. So what this tells us is the shepherd is expected to be brave enough to retrieve a piece of the sheep from the mouth of the lion that has attacked it to prove that he didn't just lose it. This is in accordance with the law uh, that comes to us from Exodus. If it is torn by beasts, let him bring it as evidence. He shall not make restitution for what has been torn. In 1 Samuel, David tells King Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and killed him. So the people listening to Jesus understood the shepherd to be a man dedicated to his job, who not only led the flock to the fold, but was willing to risk his life to protect them. And so John describes Jesus as the good shepherd. And it is important to understand the word good, too. We hear that and know that good is good, but what kind of good are we talking about here? A frozen Milky Way is good. Anything April MacGyver bakes. <laughs> I had a special request, okay, is good, okay? A doctor can have good skills, but then sometimes we talk about someone like he's the good doctor. And that good is more than just skill as a physician. In the Greek language, all right, here's your Greek lesson for today, there are two words for good. One is agathos, which means good, pleasant, or useful. And then there is kalos, good, excellent in its nature and characteristics, and therefore well adapted to its end, beautiful by reason of purity of heart and life, and hence praiseworthy. John uses kalos in his description of Jesus as the good shepherd. And hence we understand that there's a beauty a loveliness in that goodness. If Jesus is the good shepherd, we find the not so good shepherds here on earth. Now, as I said last week, <laughs> here comes that last week part again, okay? Uh, we all have those days when we're not playing nice. When that happens, when we sin, we are not excellent in our nature, uh, uh, as it talks about uh, in that definition of kalos. And we need to repent. That doesn't necessarily mean it make us bad shepherds, right? but it does mean we are not the good shepherd. Our task is to find and follow the Good Shepherd during times of tranquility or during times of stress. As we look around uh, in this sanctuary, we can't help but see things that are changing. Longtime members of this church have moved far away. Pastor Steve is retired, and I stand, <clears throat> stand before you in his place for a while. We expect that soon we will have a new clergy appointment. We can let these changes distract us, or we can embrace them. I choose to embrace them as part of God's plan for you and me. All we need to do is follow our good shepherd the way the sheep follow their shepherd. If we have Jesus as our guide, then he will protect us. 
maybe not in the way that we hope or expect, but in the way that leads to our ultimate salvation. Along the way, we need to offer the kingdom of God to those around us, working for love, with love. How do we do that? What do we do about the sheep who are not in the fold, the kids that aren't inside the rope? The kids all got it right away. They all said, hey, they're not inside the rope. They need to come inside the rope. And even the one that said, no, I don't want to come inside the rope, which I thought that was great. Okay? All right? It wasn't what I was planning on, but I thought it was great. Okay? Um, but even that one is like, well, okay, if they don't want to join us, we'll join them. I suggest that we be part of the change by doing our part to transform the world, to transform the world by making disciples of Jesus Christ. You don't need to wait for me to tell you what to do or wait to see what the new pastor uh, thinks or wait for the plan from the committee, okay? You have a good shepherd. Embrace him. Then face the world with love for one another. Go looking for those that are not in the fold and offer them the love of Christ so that they might hear his voice calling them to come into the fold. Our instructions in Matthew 28 are quite clear. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, so let's say that I have convinced you. You will now believe that it's time to change. You've dug out your old Bob Dylan album, listened to the classic song, The Times They Are A-Changing. And child of the 60s that I am, I listen to that a lot. <laughs> and I've been inspired by the lyrics to conclude with, and the first one now will later be last, for the times they are a-changing. Now you were asking, where do we start? What do we do? You just said, don't wait for you to tell us what to do. But where do I go? Who do I offer that love? There's a sign at the exit of Murrieta United Methodist Church that says, you are now entering the mission fields. So we don't have to go far. We don't have to go somewhere far away to some foreign land uh, to be an agent of change. We just have to leave the building. In the first draft of this sermon, I had begun to list some specific things that you might do and some specific people you might engage. I took most of that out because I realized yesterday that we often ignore general calls to get involved in something, to get involved because we think someone else is better able to do that work or we just don't have time or two and a half miles is a really long way to walk or something like that. So I have a different plan. You knew I had a plan, right? <laughs> I have been encouraged that as I have asked people in this congregation for help during this time of transition, no one has said no. And, and thank you very, very much for that. <laughs> I've had a couple of yes buts and a couple of not right now, but maybe later, but nobody has said no. And I've had a lot of yeses, flat out, think I can do that, I can help. For example, I intend to visit people who are in the hospital or have trouble getting out of the house or just need a visit. But I also have to work, so I don't have as much time as I would like to do to do that visiting. We have formed a visitation team uh, to make sure that everyone who needs a visit gets a visit. Okay? I asked two people if they would help. They asked others, and this week we're going to get together and kind of organize that, uh, that team. But I have to tell you, they didn't wait for me. I didn't wait for me to, to talk them, tell them what they had to do or what they should do. I got a call this week from Adelaide. She was at the hospital visiting Susan Steinberger. Uh, now, not everyone is called to be a visitor. I specifically asked people that I thought did have that calling. And of course, they knew others who might respond to a similar call. I realize that change is going to come one person at a time. And my best approach is not to stand here and issue clarion calls, join this group or that but to help each and every one of you find your call to ministry and then act on it. So my promise to you is, is that in the coming weeks, whether I'm standing here in the pulpit or sitting in a chair in the pews, I will try to do just that. I will find people who have a calling for a ministry. People like Mary Lou, who has obviously has a call for food ministry. She participates in multiple ones of those. And as we know from Paula's message, okay, I went back two weeks now, people. So you gotta, so now you gotta, now you gotta really pay attention, right? Okay, but in Paula's message, she talked about how uh, the basic needs that people have for food and how they were supporting the food and clothes closet. Uh, Mary Lou serves dinners uh, uh, at the Grange. Mary Lou uh, does things with, uh, within his steps and passes out food. But not everybody has a calling to food ministry either. So uh, we'll find a place for each and every one of you. I want you to help me with the task I have set out for myself by greeting one another in the name of the Good Shepherd. When I finish, I want you to stand as you're able 
turn to your neighbor and offer them the peace of Christ. Then look around you and find someone you don't know or don't know well and offer them that peace as well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, some of you remember. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us stand and offer each other the peace of Christ. <laughs> <laughs>